Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for staying beyond the uh, reams of what you should be. You should all be in the pub, and I'm sure you're just going to be sick of staring at me over the next three hours. No, just joking. <laughs> um, right, so my name's FC, and this is a talk about how I rob banks for a living. Um, so there are a couple of ground rules. If you've got questions, leave it to the end. Um, if we run out of time, find me on Twitter or send me an email. Um, I'll do a quick introduction because my, my normal audience is security conferences. I go to like the, the DEF cons and the black hats and the infosecs, etc. Um, so this is a bit new for me, having developers like staring at me going, what the f is this guy doing? Um, so a little introduction, right? So I'm the co-founder of a, uh, a security firm. I'm also the head of cyber research for Raytheon UK. Um, I've been doing cyber security for like 20 odd years. Um, this, this is a bit crap. This, you, you see these intros all the time, right? So we'll do a really, really short version of this, right? So I am one of these. I'm not one of these. I'm not one of these. I'm not one of these. I'm an old school one of these until these guys did this, right? That got me lots of fame, and I do loads of talking events now. And now I work for these people, these people, and these people. I often go to dress work, well, work dress like this, rather. Um, I often casually dress like this. Uh, but most of the time, I actually dress like this. Anyway, when I'm not doing this, I love doing this. I love doing this. I love doing this, which is really handy when these people do this. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the record, do not break out of handcuffs when police arrest you because they really hate it. <laughs> anyway, so this is a, a story about how I rob banks. It's going to be a, a little diatribe of interesting stories of things that have happened to me over the, over the years of doing this. Uh, I've been doing it for a very long time. I've broken into many, many banks, and I've broken into many, many buildings, like security firms, military sites, government buildings, uh, as well as commercial spaces. So does anyone here work with the police force? <laughs> no? Uh, anyone? <laughs> um, so what I'm going to show you is um, basically all illegal. Right, if you do not have permission, it is illegal to do all of the things in this talk. Yeah? And there's some stuff that you cannot get permission for and is very illegal. Um, so you're probably sitting there going, why, do I, why the hell do I care about banks? I'm a developer for whatever company. Does anyone actually work as a developer for a bank? Oh, shit. <laughs> OK. Right. Um, I'm only picking on banks because people think they're really secure, right? because they should be. All right, so um, there are two ways to rob a bank. You can do it digitally or physically. Right? Now, quick hand poll. Who thinks that a bank is more secure digitally than it is physically? Three. OK. <laughs> <laughs> How many people think it's really secure physically? Yeah? OK, I'm going to blow your minds. Right? So. <laughs> Banks tend to spend billions on inadequate digital security. They also spend billions on inadequate physical security. And you'd think, oh my god, all my money is really safe in these banks. It's not. Right, so what do you need to rob a bank digitally? You need madly hacker skills, right? You need knowledge of programming, firewalls, all of these like, cool stuff that you know, we talk about all the time at security conferences. Um, well, yeah, OK, you're going to need all that. I'll come back to this. Um, physically. What do you need to rob a bank? Well, you just need a bit of confidence, a bit of preparation, and importantly, permission. This is very important here. Um, so we all agree that banks are really secure physically. Right? So if we can prove that they're not secure physically, imagine how crap they are digitally. Right, so how do you prepare to rob a bank? Well, first of all, you just go on Google, and you look at Street View, and you look at council planning applications. You look through everything you can online. Now, can anyone spot any issues with this particular building? Security is really tight. I mean, they're so tight, they're not even in the room. Um, you can just walk in, um, and you can see everything that's happening in there. So that's going to be a nice, easy target. You walk around a bit. Um, I had to wait outside this building. Actually, I've got a little pointer. Two seconds. Um, so can you see this room here? through this massive glass window, right? I had to stand outside this building for about 40 minutes whilst they had a meeting um, projecting all of their information up on this wall. 
um, which I didn't want to take a picture of, so I had to wait for them to finish their meetings so that I didn't accidentally take a photo of their sensitive data. That's sensible, right? Um, if you walk around the back of some of these buildings, you'll find stuff like this. It's just rubbish, right? It's what we call dumpster diving in, in my industry. And uh, you can see me in the reflection here taking photos of people's rubbish. If someone is doing that around your building, ask them what the f they're doing. Um, because what they'll do is they'll take that. Well, people like me will take it because it's interesting. So we'll take all these shreddings and we'll take them back to our hotel because we're really boring. We'll put them back together. <laughs> Um, I understand the irony of the fact that I have had to redact out information from something that's been redacted so that you can't even tell that it's actually important. But it's really important stuff under there, I promise you that. Um, so that's all well and good. So we've looked outside the building, we've had a look around, and we go, okay, there's some really cool stuff. Um, how do we know what it looks like inside? Like, when I get in, where am I going to go? Well, if you walk into any major office building, who, who works in a big building? Yeah. So when you go back um, on Monday, um, go and have a look, and you'll find one of these in the lobby. Yeah? This is used by the fire brigade. In case there's any issues, they know where everything is, right? Um, you just go in, you just take it off the wall, or take a photo, or whatever. Nobody is going to arrest you for stealing a map. And nobody's going to care, because they'll be like, well, the, the, someone stole a map from my office? Like, no one cares, right? So now you've got complete internal diagrams of everything, including like, really sensitive areas, which is really handy. And you also find like, interesting things like roof void and how to get into there. So that maybe you can climb in through the roof. And I've had to do that. Um, so you explore around a little bit, and you can find some really interesting places. And it gets a little bit Blair Witchy. Um, most, most of the, the light from this photo is actually from the camera flash. It was horrible and dark and scary. Um, but you can look around. I mean, it's, it's not like you know, banks are going to have all these like underground tunnels and stuff and they're going to leave a safe... Oh. Oh. Oh, they might, they might leave... They, might, they may just leave a safe there. And, you know, one of my hobbies is safe cracking, so... Oh, well. Uh, like I said, they're really, uh, really secure. So, anyway, what I hear a lot when I'm doing security testing, and it's always legal, they come to me and they say, can you test our, our building security um, or our, phys uh, our digital security? Um, and I'll be like, okay, that's great. Um, what have you got in place? Oh, we've got really sophisticated security. <laughs> okay, have you? All right, great, yeah. You, you're, you're the one that has sophisticated security. Yeah. Uh, and they'll be like, yeah, we're, we're bristling, bristling with like CCTV cameras. Great, but the people that put it up are getting idiots. Right, so this bank um, has a way in here through a little padlock, because padlocks are secure, and a little door, which is a bit... So they've put up a CCTV camera, protecting this tree. <laughs> it's a very valuable tree, I'm sure. Um, remember this green box for a bit later. Um, so maybe I don't understand the value of trees, but people that install CCTV seem to put it quite high. <laughs> if you're putting in CCTV, it's got to be the right type of CCTV. And I've been in many, many buildings where the quality is poor, or it hasn't been set right. Or in this case, um, it's at head height, and you can just knock it off or unplug it or patch into it. Um, it's, it's crazy what you see. You also see people having systems like this. You must, you must have seen <laughs> systems like this. Um, does anyone, anyone want to take a, you know, a real hacker's mindset here? It's going to take. Um, see if you can guess what the code is. <laughs> anyone? Maybe 1970? Who knows? But it doesn't really matter because it's a terrible system because you can just unscrew it uh, and then just bypass it anyway. <laughs> so I see this a lot. Yeah. Now remember, banks are physically secure, so everything's cool, right? Um, I'm going to go on to a subject now which is very illegal unless you get lots of permission from lots of people that, you'll, that will probably say no. And it's wiretapping. Yeah. And I want to bring this up because it's not something you can do, or you could do, but you'll be breaking the law. Um, but I just want to make you aware of it because it does happen. And if someone wants into your building or into your networks, they will do this because criminals break the law. Right? <laughs> I know, shocking, right? So, these green cabinets, um, they're owned by BT, and it's under the Telecommunications Act, etc. Um, as is this little, you can barely see it here on this like, lamppost, um, and this box, which was open already, by the way, I didn't 
didn't open it. Um, and inside of these are basically just wires that, that control the telephone system. And uh, if you were to open one of these boxes, you'd see lots of pairs of wires, and these are like the wire pairs to the phone system. And all you need is basically one of these. Right? Now you can make one, or you can just buy one off of eBay now. Um, or if you're lucky, you can find a BT engineer to lend you one. Uh, but you basically open the cabinet and you clip these on, and then you're onto the telephone system. It's really simple. And the only thing that protects them is a, a little wrench set, which you can just buy. It's simple. Um, this is, in fact, so simple. During our outreach, we actually go out and we teach kids how to do wiretapping. Um, because it's fun, right? Um, so these, girl, these young girls here, they're 13, 14, I think they are. Um, and with zero knowledge, it took them half an hour to learn how to break into a cable that was monitored physically. Yeah, so you're not going to have that in your, your, uh, your work network. Um, so that if you broke any of the wires, it would set the alarm off. Um, they managed to break into the cable, get a wiretap on it, intercept some data, decrypt that data, and steal information from that scenario. Half an hour it took for kids to learn how to do this. So you can imagine a professional wouldn't need nearly as long. Um, so going back to the security stuff. Um, sophisticated security, that's it. Um, who has one of these at their office? How many people think it would stop me from getting in your building? <laughs> right? So there's, two, well, there's several problems with this, right? So let's do a little quiz. Who can tell me an issue with this one? Anyone, just shout it out. Squeeze you can squeeze, well, squeeze? You can walk through <laughs> you, could, you could easily walk through that one, right? Sorry? You could limbo. Yeah, you could limbo, but yeah, you might as well just walk past it, right? Um, however, you could maybe move this elasticated barrier thing. <laughs> That is, it's protecting this plant. I've just realized it's this valuable plant. <laughs> or you could just go up these stairs, which are not even anywhere near the security thing. Um, what about these ones? Who's got these? Everyone got these? Yeah, these are great. These little RFID, and it opens up and go through. Very Star Trek, right? Except health and safety has screwed up security yet again. Because if you put your hand in between them, it's not allowed to kill people. Oh, no, I might chop their arm off. Um, so it'll just stay open. So you just go up to it and just, you know, there you go. You just walk through. <laughs> <laughs> or another great technique I use is uh, getting really close to people. So when someone is going through it, you should get really, really close. Like, the, the more awkward you make it, the less likely they are to ask who the hell you are and what you're doing. <laughs> um, some of, the, some of the very closed-in man trap type ones, they, they got quite awkward, I tell you. Um, some interesting folks. Um, but it doesn't matter anyway, because, like I said, people do security wrong all the time. So, for example, they would just leave them open. So this one here is left open, and not only was this security guard so, you know, so on the ball, he was chatting up the reception, he noticed me taking a photo of him failing to do his job, and then... <laughs> Failed to notice me walk through said gate. <laughs> um, security guards are pretty terrible. Uh, they are paid minimum wage, but meh. Yeah. Um, or this one, which was left open, and then I proceeded to watch a bunch of people walk up to it and then swipe their access card anyway, as if it was there. It's like, that's not going to make any difference. Idiots. Um, what about magnetic locks? Has everyone got these at their office? Yeah? They're protecting probably like the most valuable areas, like server rooms, etc. Except these are all put on the wrong side of the bloody door. Right? So I can just unscrew that, and then I'm in. Or unscrew that one, and I'm in. Or this one doesn't even shut. That's what the red light means. As, as well as this alarm, which is put on the outside. So if I'm an attacker, I just need a screwdriver, and I'm into your uh, best places. My favorite one, though, is this. This door is alarmed, and it should be. Because this is so many fails on this on this door, it's unbelievable, right? So you can see this is from the outside, because if you look at the reflection, you can see the outside well, right? So this is where we're coming in. And we've got this glass door, because criminals can't break glass. Um, and they've mounted the maglock on the wrong side of the door, so I could just undo that, right? But the door, door's got an alarm on it. So how am I going to bypass that? Well, the alarm thing is on here, with a key in it. So I can just turn off the alarm. <laughs> Unscrew the maglock and walk through the door. <laughs> it genuinely blows my mind how that even got past anyone. That's crazy. 
But maybe, maybe they're doing it right. Maybe your company is doing everything correctly, right? So I've had to steal this image from the internet because that's the only place this ever actually happens. Um, so basically, I, ha I had a job once uh, where I had to get into a secure site, and um, they had the guards and the like, AMPR cameras and stuff. And if you rocked up and you were not expected, you were just shooed away, right? So there's no way you're going to get in. So, ah, bugger, how am I going to get in here? Um, the great thing is, with this company, they had a park and ride system. Now, who's got a park and ride at their place? No? No? Nobody's like, quite big enough. OK. Um, so the great thing is, if you follow people home from work, um, and you'll find out where their park and ride is, you drive into the park and ride, and you get on the park and ride bus, and nobody asks who you are, because who the hell's getting on the park and ride at 8.30 in the morning if it's not an employee? You get into the bus, like this one, um, which allows me to take a photo, um, and then you ride that in. And then they're expecting the bus, so they let it through the gates. And nobody's checked who I am. And so you just get in and just like wander around the building and the site. And then you go in and do lots of interesting stuff, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, and this comes down to security guards are terrible. Right, so this guy here, he has lost his job. Right? Now, this is the sad part of my job is you have to be a little bit psychopathic in the fact that you know, the stuff you're going to do is highlighting bad stuff that people do, and they're going to lose their job. But bear with me. This guy is protecting your money. Right? That's how you have to look at it. Um, and he should have been doing his job. Instead, as you can see, I'm standing behind his desk. Now, this is what's known as a dark site. And a dark site means it is basically very few people. There is, in fact, only two security guards, him and another guy across the building. I convinced them to let me into this site because nobody ever visits these sites. Um, and he's sitting there diligently watching the security camera. Not me, because I'm supposed to be there. Right? Um, this guy, however, is watching very diligently for the sandwich van to turn up. <laughs> I kid you not. So when the sandwich van turns up, he puts on his coat. He says, are you going to be all right here, mate? Yeah, fine. He walks out past these metal like guarded barriers to a sandwich van, to which I'm like, fuck you, I'm off around your site. Um, he obviously shouldn't have done that. Um, he also left his keys so I could get to all of the other keys for the site. Um, and there I am. I, he's locked out of his own building. I'm inside with all the money. Uh, but I often do commercial ones as well. And um, we like to, wow, I get quite bored. After a couple of hours running around your building, I'll get a little bit bored and be like, all right, I need to teach some people some lesson. Who walks away from their computer and doesn't lock their screen? Come on, hands up. Go on, go on, right, right. If you do that and I'm walking around your building, I will, I will take everything. I will take everything off of your desk as well if you've left it with stuff on it. Who leaves their keys and their wallets and stuff because they trust everyone around them, yeah? Right? What will happen is you'll come back to your desk and it'll be clear. Some magical pixies will have cleared it up for you. And they've taken your car keys, and they'll have put it all in your car boot, which people get a little bit annoyed at, but I think it proves the point. Um, I'll take everything, like everything I can. Sometimes I'll be asked to like, get certain things, like these red folders. I had to get into the building, get the red folders, get out. Um, but yeah, I'll take keys, phones, everything. And people leave their, their stuff unlocked all the time. These 14 PCs that were stored in a stairwell I carried out of the building. In fact, people held the doors open for me. <laughs> because if, you, if you've got a struggling IT guy who's carrying heavy PCs and he's like, oh, can you open the door, please? And so people will let, well, people will actually help you steal their stuff. It's amazing. Uh, again, more examples of like, you know, just stuff left around and more keys. And um, this guy came back to a, uh, a desk with just a coffee lid on it. I took everything, uh, just to prove a point. Um, but it's not just like their stuff, right? So you can get, who's got these secure um, bins for like confidential data, yeah? Right, which superman or superwoman could lift that? Do you think anyone could lift that up? Yeah, right. Who, who has these massive wheelie bin versions? Yeah, <laughs> right. Describe to me any person that has ever emptied them. Because if I put on any sort of high-vis jacket and walk into your building and pick up one of those uh, wheelie bins and wheel it out, are you going to notice me? Probably not. 
So where do all of these confidential papers go? Yeah, they, they get put in there, um, and if I haven't stolen them, they, they go downstairs into like a loading bay where they get shredded or burnt or whatever, depending on the uh, severity. So if I go down into the loading bay and wheel one of these out, I've got a lot of confidential data that I shouldn't have access to. Um, this was quite funny in the fact that I think this is probably the most physical data removed from a government site. Um, <laughs> that shouldn't have been. And to the point where I got it out into the car park and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I need to put this back really quickly because if someone comes along and steals it from me, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I should be worried. Um, but we also do asset infiltration. It's not always about stealing stuff out of the, the company, not like getting the data out. We have to put stuff in. So um, we'll put things in like key loggers. Yeah? So we'll just come in and if you've left your, like, you know, your stuff unattended, I'll plug a key logger in. Or I'll put in a wireless AP so I can attack your network from the car park rather than being in the building. Um, I'll put in cameras. I had a nice little hidden camera that I set up on a, a security desk that was basically pointed at the alarm system. Went in the next day, take it out, saw the alarm code, went in that night, disarmed the alarm. Sweet. Um, we also get people in. So, you know, sometimes you need more than one person to do a, a test on a, a site. So you can, like, smuggle people in. Once you're in, then you get a group of people. And you can have, like, there was one point where we had 10 people sitting in the corner of an office doing work on this network. <laughs> And uh, nobody noticed us, because it was a massive company. So it's like, oh, it's just a new group of people in the corner working. It's great. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so this is like a proof of concept of the type of thing that I do. Um, I made this in about half an hour in like, in like you know, one evening, just as a, an idea. So there's an IP phone. Who has these on their desks? Yeah. Great thing with IP phones is there's nothing in them anymore, um, which means you can fit stuff like a Raspberry Pi in it and then solder that onto the network port with a wireless AP on it, and then you're on the network. And if the, this has also got the power coming from the IP uh, phone as well. So if anyone's looking around for this rogue device, they're just going to see a phone that works. Um, and then that's it. I can just wirelessly attack your network all the time. And the best thing is, like I say, I sometimes get a little bit bored in these like tests where I'm like, running around your work. Imagine if you were in your building and you didn't have any work to do and you had to spend two or three hours in there. You get quite bored, right? So you start like messing with people, you start messing with their head a little bit. Then you can do anything, yeah? So for example, you can build an office. This is me in my office that I built from pieces stolen from four different buildings that I brought in there, including the CSO's uh, Blackberry, which I stole from his desk. Uh, phones, this ridiculously heavy glass table, uh, this chair, which was really lovely and comfortable, which I found in this really secure building. And I was trying to get it out, and I came across like one of these barriers, and I couldn't get it through. And some you know, helpful staff said, oh, you need to phone security to get, let them to get you through. I was like, it's a bit of a hassle, I just want my chair out. So they helped me lift it over the barriers, <laughs> <laughs> which is really nice, and then I wheeled it across to my new office. Um, the irony of this is that wall there is the security office. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Um, you can tell people you're on a team building exercise and get them to build a teepee out of pieces around the room. <laughs> it's just great. I got in so much trouble for this, I cannot, I cannot tell you. Because uh, appar apparently taking down a financial area of this particular building was quite detrimental and lost them quite a lot of money, but I thought it proved the point. <laughs> um, this was my all-time favorite, though. Uh, I joined a meeting. <laughs> Exciting, right? Um, I came onto this forum, oh, a lot of people hanging around, like having this meeting, what the hell's going on? Um, it turns out they were having, uh, they had the CEO there who was saying, oh, this is brilliant. We've had like the best security year this year. We've had no breaches or anything. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. This is getting interesting. Um, and I see my client, who's, who's brought me in, sitting at the front of this meeting. So I pull out my phone, and I send him a text, and I'm in your meeting, lol. <laughs> 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 and, and what happens next is amazing. He sort of just gets his phone, answers it, looks up, looks around, it's like... <laughs> and I'm like, I really hope there's a Q&A session with this CEO right at the end, where I go, who the hell am I, and what am I doing in your building? 
<laughs> so you can have a lot of fun with this, but it, it, it all goes to prove a point. Anyway, so I hope we can all say now, how many people think banks are secure physically? <laughs> None, right? So you're all, all developers, I presume, yeah? So you're all sitting there feeling pretty smug, right? You're like, well, that's great. Physical is screwed. Digitally, we're amazing, right? Um, so I lied a little bit earlier. Um, you don't need these skills, uh, really, to rob a bank. It's quite easy. It's, in fact, probably easier than physically. Um, I just enjoy the physical stuff more. Um, so who's heard of the black swan theory, right? This is, if you observe swans, you go, oh, they're all white, right? So all swans are white. That's the rule. Yeah, all swans must be white. If you find a black swan, you've completely disproved that, right? So all of your code is secure. Who's written insecure code before? Wow, that's awesome. I was not expecting that at all. Wow. Uh, basically, everyone put their hands up. That's great. Um, OK, that's, that's kind of ruined my story now. <laughs> basically, you guys have to, to develop code and write code that is secure all the time. I only have to find the one flaw to get past your system, right? So how do you rob a bank digitally? Um, now, we haven't got long, and I don't want to keep you from the pub too much. So we'll, we'll have a bit of a whirlwind of this, right? So what you do is the same thing as you do if you're doing a physical bank. You take a look around, and you'll find, OK, like that is a genuine bank running a Joomla admin login. Right? And you go, OK, right, maybe it's just the one bank that does that, right? No, so this one runs a webmail, because that's sensible, right? Um, or this one that runs a website administration. Like if, if you're doing this, just quit your job and become a carpenter or something, because you should not be allowing this, right? Um, do dumpster diving. So go and have a look. Yeah? You'll find stuff like this, open directories with like, log files and good old, what's his name, Chris. Chris has been uploading some cool stuff, so I can go and look at this stuff, because I know where it is now. Right? So you're probably thinking, oh, OK, Right, maybe I need to learn to hack to be a better developer, right? So can you teach me how to hack? Well, yes, I can. It's really simple. Try these things. Try a, a backtick or a single quote or put in some HTML and see if you can make stuff break, right? So how many people have like a testing environment for their code? How many people put it through security testing before it's even released? How many people have it pen tested afterwards? Yeah, you, you need to get security involved a lot sooner. Right? And you guys need to learn a little bit about security in order to make sure that you don't make the mistakes that allow us in. Right? So who remembers this guy, the phone jacker? Yeah, comedy show on, I think it's Channel 4, was it? Yeah, um, so he had this really, really great sketch where he, he phoned up people and said, uh, uh, I'll try and do the accent, but it was terrible. Right? It was something like, hello, uh, there's a pigeon in your bank account, and we need the PIN number to get the pigeon out of your bank account. And people were like, there's a pigeon in my bank account? <laughs> How the hell does that happen? And some people would give them PIN numbers and stuff. It's like crazy, right? Um, so from this, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to this. And I thought, this is quite hilarious. We should put pigeons into people's bank accounts, right? Or into their banks. This would be great. So um, when I'm doing a bank, heist job thing, um, I will often put pigeons into their bank accounts. <laughs> yeah. right? this, pigeon, this pigeon is not supposed to be on this page. It is a bank, and I have put stuff onto their site. Right? Um, I do this a lot. <laughs> I, I probably have too many pi uh, pigeon pictures. Uh, this, is, this is my favorite one, though, uh, because I think that actually improves the site. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should keep it. I, I don't know what they've done with it. Um, I hope they fixed the error. <laughs> it just looks so brilliant. I love it. Um, right. Anyway, so away from pigeons, right? So you need to sanitize your data. This is what I'm trying to say, is uh, you guys need to understand where the attack vectors are that I would use in order to get access into your company or your, whoever your client is, right? So who's seen this XKCD cartoon before? Yeah, it's quite famous, right? How many people understand it? A fair few, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right, so if you're, not input, uh, if you're not sanitizing your input data, I can put stuff like pigeons into your, into your sites. Right? If I can put stuff in, it means I can get stuff out, because I can start messing around with the back end 
systems that you've got, right? So this is a tool. This is a tool called SQL Map, which basically takes those uh, input validation issues and will try and get control of the backend database, right? And so in this case, you can see we've taken over a MySQL database and it is now fetching columns for us. And in this case, for a bank, we get credit card numbers. Yay! Right? Uh, I've redacted them out, obviously, because <laughs> I don't want you people getting rich. Uh, <laughs> so this is the sort of thing that comes from just a simple search engine or input form, something like that. So this is how we leverage it. So we input commands into it that make the database error, and then we can start making the, the database give back information that it shouldn't. Um, and you're probably thinking, oh, great, yeah, he, he's done some database hacking. Yeah, yeah. No, I make a lot of money out of this. Um, I have to give it back, unfortunately. <laughs> but it shows the sorts of money that you can get away with um, if, you're, if you're robbing a bank digitally. This is a little bit different from if you're robbing a bank physically, because the best I've ever got away with is a couple of gold bars, and they're really freaking heavy. Um, and it's, so it's so much easier to get away digitally than it is physically. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Um, how many people know what a zero day is? Cool, right? Now, there's going to be a video edit here, I hope, right, where um, the video is going to go to just me and not show the screen. Because um, if, you, if you go to any security conference, right, um, you'll, you'll get people say, oh, this is all very technical, but I'm not going to drop any zero days. Yeah, so everyone goes, oh, that's terrible crap. Right, um, so first of all, what is a zero day? Um, this is some sort of surveys and questions on Twitter that I did, right? So anything that is not disclosed publicly that will affect the public's data, right? It's basically the, the, the remit of it, right? So it's not a particular vulnerability, it's not a particular type. It is if I have gone to the company and said, you have this vulnerability that is affecting people's data, and between them fixing it, and releasing it to the public, that's where the zero day part comes in, right? Um, so for this, let's see, um, you're probably thinking what the problem is, right? But the trouble is it's really not that hard to find zero days as we have probably gathered, right? Um, in fact, I find them so often, because I've been doing it so often, uh, you get kind of a gut feeling of how a site is broken. So even when you're just surfing the net, you go, oh, that looks a bit odd. Um, so you can literally trip over these things. Now, most people go, oh, yeah, you find a zero day maybe once a year or whatever. I find one probably once or twice a week. Um, it, they're, they're so prevalent. Um, so what I want to do is ask you for no cameras or cell phones or videos at this point. Um, so what can you do about it as developers, right? What, what can we get you to do to help prevent people like me. Now, I'm a good guy. I do it ethically. I do it morally. I do it because you're paying me to do it. Um, I'm not a criminal. I've never done any criminal activity before, right? Um, so what can you do? So the first thing is lower the bar, right? Don't try and win against nation states, right? If someone is a determined hacker, whether it's nation state provided or just someone that's really, really pissed off about it, um, they will find a way in, right? So lower your bar a little bit, yeah? Just try and do the really basic, simple stuff, yeah? Because that will actually help. There's a really good story about two guys walking through a woods, right? And uh, suddenly a big grizzly bear appears. <sighs> that was my bear impression, right? Um, <laughs> and then one of the guys starts taking off his like, rucksack and he starts to run. And the guy's like, what the hell are you gonna do? You can't outrun a bear. He goes, oh, I don't need to. I just need to outrun you, <laughs> right? So you just need to outrun the other companies, yeah? If you're slightly harder to hack into, then they're going to go somewhere else because they're always about the easiest target. All right, so fix the simple stuff first. Input validation is a massive thing, All right? What else can we do? We can demand a bigger security budget from our C-suite. Um, you know, you need the time, you need the budget to go off and learn this stuff. You need time to, like, code into it. Um, and it's not about the money, it's about sending a message. And that actually fitted really well with this slide. Um, so yeah, you need to demand that. If you're not demanding that, then they don't take it seriously. And I can guarantee you the amount of money that they will spend on security at the, that level, when it's being written, will be minuscule compared to the fines they'll get from GDPR uh, in the upcoming year. Um, 
so they need to make that call, and you need to communicate to that. Um, and just say, look, give me time in order to write this securely so that we can do this properly. <sighs> Build in security from the start. I'll let you read the slides. It's quite funny. Um, so build from the foundation. Build a strong foundation. If, you, if you're trying to bolt security on at the last minute, uh, like a little pen test coming come in right at the very last bit and says, oh, it's all broken. You, you're not going to tear it down again and start again just because security has said it's a bit terrible. You need to do it from the very beginning. Otherwise, everything you build on top of it will fail. And that is it. So you can go home, or you can ask questions. I don't mind. Uh, it's, it's up to you. So there we go. That's it. Uh, are there any questions at all? Okay. Oh. Which bank do I? So the question was, what, what bank do I put my money in? Um, <laughs> I diversify my bank savings. Is uh, that's the best way? Um, yeah, don't rely on just one bank. Simple. Any more? Oh, it's loads. Do you, do you often get caught when doing physical testing? So I've been doing physical testing for a very long time, and I've tested thousands and thousands of buildings. Um, the, to, to the point where um, a couple of years ago, uh, during Christmas, I was doing eight high street banks a week. Right, so that, it's, it's quite a lot. It's not just like a one-off thing. Uh, it's like walk into a high street bank, get into behind the tills, get whatever, and then get out again. So have I ever been caught? There have been two times where something has gone wrong. It wasn't because I was caught, but because of the client screwed it up for me. Uh, so one time was... Uh, they went out of policy and procedures, and instead of like, going through these checks, um, when they got a little bit nervous, they just phoned armed response, and then armed response surrounded the bank, and then I had to talk my way out of that, which was fun. Uh, <laughs> the other time was uh, a client came up, and I was like, right, I'm in your building, uh, just to let you know. And he came and met me, and then called security on me. And I was like, if I hadn't phoned you, you wouldn't know I was here. And so I almost punched him, and then we had a bit of an argument, and I left. <laughs> so, yeah, so only the two times, but out of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of buildings I've done, uh, no, never been caught. I've always managed to succeed with everything, so it's quite interesting. It's always a bit, gets a bit nerve-wracking every time I do one, because it's like, oh, shit, is this going to end my, like, run of good ones? And then it all goes fine, so that's cool. When you're... Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, so the question was, what would someone have to say to me in order to um, make me go, oh, I'm really sorry, you've caught me, blah, 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 right? Um, first of all, I'd run away, right? That, that's the first thing I do. It's a lot of running. It's very hard on the knees when you're jumping over, build, uh, over uh, stairwells and whatnot. Um, but generally, just if you don't know someone, if they're not wearing their badge or you don't know who they are, just say, hey, can I help you? You look lost. You know, are you trying to find something? Are you trying to find someone? Um, that's a really good way of approaching people because people don't like talking to other people, especially if they don't know them, especially if they're like dressed up in a way that makes them look more higher level than they are. Um, so yeah, th th that's probably the best advice I can give is just go up to them and say, can I help you? Uh, no, so th there's no courses for this. This is just, um, <laughs> this is, it's just one of those things where um, you just fall into it. Yeah, you, yeah I, I started from a, a very young age where I didn't have a lot of money, my family were very poor, and so you have to like blag a little bit and just sort of convince people to let you into places or give you food or whatever. And so that just becomes a natural extension of like, well, actually, I can point out all these flaws in your security systems, and then you just kind of end up getting paid for it because, hey, you're good at it, so you might as well get paid, right? Um, so that's how I fell into it. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a rocky road. Let's put it that way. My, my first bank that I ever robbed was uh, an interesting story. <laughs> um, I, I was very nervous. It's my first bank. It's an international bank with. Uh, uh, they didn't deal in like money, like sort of you know, cash. They, they dealt in like bullion, right? So it's a massive company in uh, in London, and it's three in the morning because that's the best time to like scope out buildings. And uh, I'm sitting there. I'm just completely mesmerised by this the state of this building. I'm like, oh my god, how am I going to get into this thing? And I'm sitting there looking at it. 
I'm like, Christ, how am I going to get into this? And suddenly I hear someone behind me. He's like, excuse me, mate, what are you up to? I'm like, I'm trying to work out how to break into this bank. <laughs> Turn around, it's two police officers. <laughs> Let me tell you... <laughs> how difficult it is to convince two policemen that is your job, it is not illegal. <laughs> so from now on, I always do my, my uh, research like undercover a little bit more subtly than that. So. Oh, yeah, sorry. Have you ever been really, really impressed with some company's security? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, people spend a lot of money on stuff. Um, that I can name a couple of places where... Uh, um, there was one, one system where they spent £60,000 on a new door system. And they were like, you'll never get in. It is state-of-the-art. You need like a, a, a special fob which is encrypted, so you can't clone them, blah, blah, blah. Um, you'll never get into this building. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I spend the, the early morning before. Like, so it's like 3, 4 in the morning. It's snowing just gently. You know that really crappy snow? It's not real snow. It's just crap snow, right? Um, I've climbed over a barbed wire fence. I've climbed through a bramble bush. My arms and legs are just shredded. And I'm having to sit in this, half in this ditch, which is a bit full of water. Snow's coming down. I've got my night vision kit on, my ski mask on, freezing cold, watching this bloody 60,000-pound uh, door system. Where the fuck am I going to get in here? And uh, I spot a tiny floor. So after a couple of hours of just confirming this issue, I uh, jump back in my car and then go back to the hotel, put on a suit, walk up to the site, and I'm like, right, okay, I'm getting a bit nervous. Walking up, it's very exposed. It's obvious I'm going for this building. Watch, looking at my watch, adjusting my pace just ever so slightly, I walk up to this 60,000 pound unhackable door system, and it just opens and just <laughs> lets me in, right? And I just, I just walk in. And the after, after um, wash up meeting, um, was very interesting. They were like, oh, you must have done something. You're like some sort of Jedi. You sort of did something, right? You had something in your pocket. I'm like, no, no, no. Just walked up to it. And we reviewed the CCTV footage, and you'll just see me just walk up to it, check the watch, walk a little bit slower, walk up to it, the door opens, I walk through. Turns out that when they installed it, they left it in engineering mode, which means every 15 minutes, it just does one revolution just to check that it works. So all I had to do was walk up to it. It's precisely the moment that it did this test, and then it walked, I walked straight in. So yeah, was, that was about the best I've ever had. Interesting. Uh, doing these talks, has it made your job harder now? No, no. Um, almost every building I go into, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm totally going to keep an eye out for you, and we'll put like, pictures up. No, because I can change my appearance quite quite quickly and quite easily. I actually did a, a, a normal pen testing job at a company where I interacted with the receptionist every day and we got really chatty. And then the day of my social engineering test was stupidly scheduled for the end of the week. So I'd been in there for a whole week, so they knew my face. Um, so I shaved my beard and I changed suit and blah, 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 and just changed my appearance, take all my piercings out, etc. And I looked very different. And they didn't even recognize me when I went up to the desk and spoke to them. So. I'm, I'm quite lucky in that I'm a bit of a, I can be a bit of a grey man and change a little bit. So. Uh, did you ever get hacked by some other hacker? Uh, have I ever been hacked by another hacker? I wouldn't know. If they're really good, I wouldn't know. Simple as that. Um, uh, another question. Uh, yep. Do you have any recommendations how to manage passwords? How to? How to manage passwords. How do you manage passwords? Um, I weirdly remember mine just in my head. Uh, that's not something for everyone. Um, you'll hear people say, oh, I'll use a password manager. That's great, apart from it's on your computer and you're probably going to get broken into and stolen anyway. Um, so I would recommend have a look at your threat landscape. Right? What, is, what is more likely to happen to you? Are you going to get malware on your computer that will take over your password manager and all your passwords sold? Or is someone going to break into your house and find the little notepad that you've written them all down in? Yeah? People will th say that's a stupid thing to do, write your passwords down. But it's in your house. And unless you don't trust your other half and your kids, um, then you have other problems. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, just write it down in a little notepad and keep that safe. Simple as that. That's, that's the best way. Or remember them all if you're a bit weird. Yes? Hey, um, something on one of your slides caught my eye. I was wondering if ever you've broken in and discovered the bank is doing something illegal, and if so, what do you do? 
Uh, so something similar. I'm not going to go into too much detail on stuff that I've found other elsewhere. Um, but I once broke into a, a massive bank, and I got into the CEO's uh, area. Uh, it's only for the directors. And uh, I managed to convince uh, the PA that was outside, being very vigilant, actually. She was very uh, um, security conscious. Um, but I managed to cause a diversion and stole a load of paperwork off of her desk. Um, and I went through this paperwork, and I found um, a letter where the board were firing two of the directors that they didn't know about yet because it was on the PA's desk. Um, at which point I was like, ooh, I could make a lot of money on the stock market with this. <laughs> or I could take it back and be like, hands up, there you go, you should, you should have this back. So that's about the worst I've ever had. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Uh, yeah? Oh. I might, I'm quite curious about one technical thing. What device did you use to do uh, pictures? Uh, do you use glasses with the uh, possibility of taking pictures, or you use some, some phone or what, whatever? Right. What so, do you use? So this, this thing. So the question was, what, what do I use to take pictures on these jobs, right? Um, so once I'm into a building, right, I've, I've Screw just perimeter security, and that means I mean, yeah, and nobody cares. Once you're in, they just assume that you're supposed to be there. Um, so over the course of a couple of days, if I'm there, if I'm lucky enough, um, I'll start pushing the boundaries and seeing how much I can get away with before someone says, "What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you, you shouldn't be here doing this." Yeah. So my my dress code will change quite dramatically. So you saw the picture at the very beginning. That was taken by a client after three days at a place where they only wear a suit. Right? If you're not wearing a suit and tie, you're, you're cut off. Right? But I was in there dressed like that, and nobody gave a, gave a damn about it. Right? So what I use for taking pictures? Well, I use a massive SLR camera. Right? Because, <laughs> because I don't want to be covert. I'm not all about the covert. I want people to say, you can't be doing this. Um, I had one job, but it was very similar to the one at uh, the bottom right there, um, where I went in, I ruined the building. Um, ruined all the security, and then I was like, oh, damn, I need to take some photos for evidence, right? So I went down to reception, and I was like, I just need to get a camera out of my, out of my car. Uh, can you let me back in? Because I've left my coat upstairs with the pass. And she was like, oh, yeah, fine, cool. So I went over to my hotel, got a massive camera with a huge lens on it, and I come back in, and she lets me through because she remembers me from like just a few minutes ago without a pass. I go up onto this floor, and I'm like, right, I'm just going to start like, taking pictures. So I'm sitting there like taking pictures like this, like stood there brazen. Yeah, so someone would go, what are you doing? And uh, suddenly these women go, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, just taking some pictures. All right, we, we're going to be in a magazine. Uh, <laughs> you're going to be in a report. <laughs> so so that's... That, so that's why I use a massive camera, as big as possible, to make it like, here I am. You should be stopping me, but you're not. So, uh, there's a guy somewhere down here that had a question. Yeah. So uh, you've seen those nice uh, trans bank transfers that you've made for a couple of zeros. Yeah. Do you think that if that would be uh, not legal, would you get away with that? Would they notice that you took that money and they would probably find that? Issue? So... Uh, it takes a long time to investigate lots of things like that. If you take large amounts, they'll notice it very quickly. If you take small amounts from lots of places, they won't notice. Um, there, there's, there's a limit. I'm not going to tell you what that limit is, but there's a limit where they'll just go, it's not worth our time. Fine, they got away with it. Simple as that. <laughs> it's a very small amount, but it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, any, any more questions, or do you want to go? Oh, sorry, everyone. There's some, some more questions. <laughs> you, if you want to go, you can go. If those who want to stay and ask questions, you can. I don't mind. Are you a specialist uh, to banks only? or, or No, do you also um, do I, I just chose banks for this talk because of everyone assumed at the very beginning that they, they're physically and digitally secure, and, and they're not. It was just kind of proving a point. If I, if I said, oh, I break into loads of commercial offices that do, like, kitchens, Nobody's going to care. <laughs> like, oh, wow, well done. Yeah, great. You stole the kitchen sink, literally. Um, I didn't intend for that pun to happen. That was, that was weird. Um, so, no, I don't, I don't just specialise in banks. It's any, anyone or anything. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, there's no way to move your TV series which depicts um, that what you're doing in the real or, or entire hacking and then stuff like this um, in an accurate way. Hacking? Digitally hacking? No, there's not really. Um, Nmap appeared in The Matrix, like one of the Matrix movies. Um, Mr. Robot got pretty close, but it was pretty terrible. Um, as for breaking in physically, the best, best thing I can recommend is the movie Sneakers, where they actually do very similar to what I do, which is break into the physical building, steal money, and then go back in and go, this is what I got. So that's a really cool movie. So That's about it, really. So if my company wanted to hire you to come and break in and test yep. our security, what sort of rough price would that cost? <laughs> Ooh. So my answer to that is, how much have you got? <laughs> <laughs> so come and speak to me afterwards if you, if you want to talk about it. Um, so I should, I should really sort of point out here, I think social engineering, as, as I used to do, is pretty much dead. It's a, very much a snapshot of the security system that you've got. Um, so nowadays, I tend not to do social engineering attacks against a company. I'll go in and go, right, okay, walk me through your building, and I will show you all of the maglocks that are wrong, all of the CCTV that's wrong, all of the ways that I can break into your building. Because you'll never get that from a social engineering test. You'll get, oh, your security guard was you know, away taking... Uh, yeah, a toilet break for these two minutes, or like the the um, the revolving door. There's like this one 30 second gap that I have every 15 minutes. You won't ever get told about all of the problems you have everywhere else. So I now I've now moved into physical assessments rather than social engineering. But we can have a chat afterwards. So how do you protect your digital world? <laughs> um, lots of air gaps. Air gaps are the king. Segregation and air gaps. Um, I've, I've seen some very impressive air gap systems, um, but you can't just half-heartedly do it. Um, I've been into lots of companies where they've had an air gap, and then people have been charging their iPhones on the air gap system. And it's just like, what are you doing? You're just doing it wrong. So you, you need to segregate as best as possible. And obviously, understanding how people attack, um, that's the only way that you can work out how to defend yourself. But like I said before, if someone really wants in, if it's nation state level, you're screwed. Simple as that. So, any more? Or have you finally given up and just want to go? <laughs> I, think, I think that's it. Right, you can all go home. Go on. Make it, make it, do it, makes us.